Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, is it the top? Is it the top? Is it the top? Now. Yeah, I'm starting now, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hello <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, uh, I think I'm going to start with my sidecar today. Um, and I knew from the off when I entered I wanted to do a stirred down sidecar because one of the things I love about the sidecar is it's very bright and it's very citrusy, uh, but it's also dry. But I wanted to find out whether I could make a stirred drink and still retain some of that bright brightness or at least have something somewhere in the middle where you get the sort of darkness and the complex levels of a stir drink, but also something that's still kind of, yeah, it's bright, it's the exact thing. Uh, and also, I wanted to approach the two different drinks differently, obviously. Uh, this one, I wanted to do more like taking things from cooking and being quite scientific about it and recording all my results and yields and things like this. And then the other one, I wanted to try and do it a bit more uh, hands-on, and I'll explain why. Uh, when I start on this one. So uh, I started off with the cognac uh, and, well, I'll do it other way. Started with the cognac and uh, I do 45 ml per drink. Um, and then I started to think about how I could get that citrus element without using any kind of citrus. And I started with citric acid and that's what I did for the last round. But as since then, as what we were saying in Tony's presentation, you're tweaking and constantly thinking. So I started looking into acid, uh, not LSD, but like, you know, started looking into citric acid and uh, all these things. Uh, and I stumbled upon champagne acid and seeing as it's cognac, I thought it was quite appropriate. Champagne acid is a mix of tartaric and lactic acid. And you just find it's a little bit more bright and it does kind of put you back in that place of sipping on champagne. Uh, so I mixed this into a salt solution also because I feel that salt brings out the flavor of everything. You know, chefs use salt in desserts. So I'm using four dashes of this. Two minutes. <coughs> uh, and then I was roasting lemons at the time for a drink on our menu. And I noticed this horrible, almost must be cancerous black stuff on the bottom of the pan. Uh, and I just, it reminded me of roast dinners and, and, and uh, that kind of caramelized burnt lemon. I call it lemon marmite uh, or lemite, whatever you prefer. Um, and <coughs> Uh, and then I mixed a plum eau de vie into this and then put it in a sous vide bag and froze it for two days and then strained it. Uh, but this is kind of like, it's very dark and bitter, but also bright and awesome. And it was just the taste, uh, definitely, uh, it was just I wanted to use in the drink. Now I have to tell you a story about Rachel, who's a lovely little regular who comes into our bar. Uh, and she's a beekeeper and a pilot and she's best friends with Morgan Freeman. Not really, but we'd see that. Uh, and you can see my awesome labeling skills here. So this is my grapefruit infused Hollywood honey fino, which is a bit long, but I dehydrated the grapefruit, put this in a sous vide bag and then into a bain marie and then cut it with honey two to one. But this is just gonna lengthen the drink, sweeten it and keep it, uh, add another dimension of citrus. And I'm using 20 per drink. Ooh. And then of course, what would a sidecar be without triple sec? So 20 of that as well. Uh, sorry, I didn't mention it, it was 7.5 of the lemon marmite. <laughs> um, I obviously still wanted it to look like a sidecar, or at least a stir drink, but when you tasted it, it'd be very, very clear that it still was a sidecar. Um, And I'm calling this a doff of the cap, by the way, because it's a doff of the cap to how much and uh, has changed since we started thinking about make drink, making drinks. A doff of the cap to what a sidecar kind of for me represents, which yeah. is sitting at a bar in like, sort of there's a hum of the bar and it's dark lighting and it's, it, it just has this kind of old timey feel for me. Um, oh yeah. So I, representing that. Uh, and just for the uh, nose, I wanted to just do a lemon zest on the top, just so it keeps it bright and keeps it happy. 
Sorry, I might, I might do a few lasers throughout. So please uh, start drinking as they'll be the best they are now. And I'll carry on with the next. <coughs> uh, so this is the doff of the cap, yes. Um, my next drink is called the Heritage Fizz. Obviously, Merle is very deeply rooted in heritage and, and uh, it's a family business. And uh, this got me thinking about my family because, you know, I'm a narcissist. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and I started thinking about my grandmother and then I uh, originally started, made this drink with our Santeru, but it, something wasn't working with it. So I decided to get rid of all the science thing and solely go on my palate and taste. And I was constantly tasting this syrup whilst making it. And my hands, well, my hands went in there, but uh, it was very hands-on, essentially. Uh, so this is celery, um, cherry blossom, and uh, salt syrup uh, with absinthe as well. So this is like my, rep, like my own version of absinthe. Uh, and there is seven, uh, sorry, 10 mil of this and 20 poire. The poire just seemed to work much more. Awesome. So it's five minutes of that. Uh, then I wanted something French. I wanted something to cut through uh, the sweetness. Uh, so I'm using Volson uh, Old Rhino white, Rye. Um, and that's just 10 mil of this. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just going to stir this. So it's kind of vegetal, but it's also sort of sweet, salty, and I'm going to top it up with flurry in a minute. And Morgan is a lady who delivers our fizz, and she just kind of screams stuff at me in French and then just chucks champagne at me. I love her. Um, but again, it's a family, uh, family run vineyard, and they make incredible champagne. Ooh. Perfect. Um, and then I started thinking about the vessel. I didn't want to go with a normal champagne vessel. I wanted to <coughs> keep it in. I wanted something very small and something pleasant to drink out of. So, and also these glasses are really good at keeping aroma in. And I like quite simple looking <coughs> things. Ow, my finger. Uh, Where's my flurry? Sorry, I don't know where he's put it. Ah, oh, you fucker. Fucking joking me. My apologies. Aha. So, this is Morgan's fizz. I'm just putting 30 mil in this. This is just going to dry it out and brighten it up a little bit. And again, I kind of, I think I like to keep things simple and somewhat, so I'm doing a small lemon zest on the top and keep all the oils within the glass. Hi. Now, onto my stinger. Um, I'm going to use, where are you? No. Cafe. Uh, I'm going to make a coffee and mint stinger. Perfect. Um, so, it's just a no-brainer, isn't it? Coffee and mint's going to go awesome. have a backup glass for this one. Nice and delicate. Cool. 
And there's my stinger. Thank you very much.